everyone. Welcome to the Unit Masters uh, speaker session. I'm really excited to give a presentation today on the Unit Network. Just about to share my screen and you can see some of the slides here. So uh, to begin with, um, I'm Michael Healy. I'm one of the co-founders of the Unit Network. I've been in the crypto space since 2010. I got started by working at WikiLeaks, built um, several tech companies since then, ran a popular social network uh, with a few million users. I worked for Wellington Partners, one of the venture capital firms in Europe. Um, very passionate about solving the wealth and equity in the world. You know, now there's a small group of people and they're the owners of things, you know, whether it's a technology company, whether it's, you know, a local supermarket, whether it's, um, you know, an agency, a, a tech startup, a small number of people, the, people, the founders and the investors, they own everything. And the rest of society, the customers and employees, you know, they're just effectively being used by the founders and investors. You know, they get paid a salary, which is, you know, a small bit to survive, but all of the value really gets created for the founders and investors. So the really cool thing about the token economy, it's able to support both sides. You know, it, it basically creates a bigger pie and instead of the pie just being owned by the founders and investors, it gets owned by the customers and employees. So really excited to talk about this concept called the token economy. It's something that, you know, us at UNIT, we really believe in and what the UNIT network really tries to create. So to get started, you know, we, we kind of see the evolution as having started with Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin was really cool. It was the first decentralized way of making payments and receiving um, and, and storing value. 2009 really changed the world by giving a new, the, the first way to do it in a decentralized way. And then Ethereum came out and said, hey, you know, payments are cool. Let's not just do decentralized payments and decentralized storing value. Let's build decentralized everything, news, you know, social networks, um, you know, uh, prediction markets, like betting sites, um, you know, games. And then P Polkadot, you know, is an evolution of Ethereum saying, instead of building everything on this one system, this one blockchain, let's build lots of different, you know, blockchains. Let's build a blockchain for finance. Let's build a blockchain for fashion. Let's build a blockchain for the token economy, which is UNIT. And, you know, UNIT we see is, is, is the first killer use case, the first real application for the blockchain which is apl applicable to the day-to-day -day person. And, and why is that? Because it, it basically comes about from DAOs. So a DAO is a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. You can think of Bitcoin, you can think of Ethereum, you can think of UNIT, you can think of you know, many of the digital assets, cryptocurrencies as DAOs, because there isn't a single, single entity or a central point which is managing, which is um, growing, which is receiving the value from this organization is decentralized. So, you know, you can see here on the left in a traditional company, there's a small group of people, you know, the, the, the CEO, the CFO, the, the owners, and that's the, it's all, everyone's reports, all employees towards the middle. And in the case of a DAO, you know, it's a decentralized framework. All of the value gets distributed by all the stakeholders. And, you know, we believe that this concept of a DAO is not just going to revolutionize the crypto sphere and, and the technology sphere, but it's really going to change the world. Um, and you can see how all of it fits in. You know, you've got all of these different people, you've got the founders, the investors, the customers, the employees, everyone, you know, serves one another and the pie just generally grows bigger, you know, and, and why is unit in a, in a good position to solve it? So we've got, you know, three really key, key innovations. One is the treasury. So if you look at cryptocurrencies at the moment and digital assets, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of speculative value. So people buy into a coin, it goes up 50% or 20%. Or three hundred percent, or you know, ten thousand percent. It's like wow, you know, it's it's all it's it's like a, it's like a game. You know, it's speculatively going up, speculatively going down. People wake up, they look at their phone, look at their computer, and they're like, yes, you know, I did good, I made money. But it's very much not based on fundamentals. It's based on popularity. So it's in the short run, you know, people buy a coin, it goes up in value. The fundamentals haven't changed apart from more people buying it, right? And we think that what this industry is going to move towards is where it's backed by underlying value. So, you know, when people, um, when people look at a coin, they can see, okay, this coin, how much of the underlying value has increased over time. And the treasury is a good way of, of solving that because let's say, you know, I had a Michael coin, let's say I had a Tiziano coin here or Eric or Zachary coin. You can see, you know, what is in the treasury. The treasury is zero. If the Michael token has a treasury of zero, Zach token has a treasury of zero. That means that you're paying all speculative value, which are like most coins at the moment. But if the if let's say the the project generates value in a decentralized way and it fills up this treasury, 
it pushes up the underlying value, similar to a book value in a company. And we think, you know, this is a simple innovation, but it's really going to transform, transform the world. The second thing is the vaults. So at the moment, you know, blockchains, uh, cryptocurrencies, they're kind of like highways. So you've got Bitcoin on a highway, you've got Polkadot on a highway, you've got Ethereum on a highway. Um, they don't really connect to one another. It's kind of like, you know, if, if someone used an email address like Gmail or Hotmail or Yahoo Mail, and it just, you know, it didn't, didn't connect. You know, it's like completely separate. You need to go through a centralized exchange. You know, if I want to send you Bitcoin and you're like, I want to receive DOM, I want to receive, you know, Ethereum or, you know, Solana or BNB coin, right? At the moment, it's really clunky, you know, to go between the coins. The highways just don't work. So what we've built with the vaults are really cool ways of bridging the chains. So, you know, effectively, someone is able to um, deposit some Bitcoin. They get a BTCU. It's a wrapped Bitcoin. And that underlying Bitcoin goes to one of these vaults. It's quite a technical solution, you know, in the sense that, you know, how bridging is done at the moment, how different chains talk to one another. They use something called uh, WBTC as an example, or wormhole, or um, WETH wrapped Ethereum. And how that works is, is by two ways. One, wrap Bitcoin, you're effectively sending the Bitcoin to a custody provider, meaning they hold onto the Bitcoin. Um, um, wrap Bitcoin uses this custody provider called BitGo, B-I-T-G-O, and they hold onto the Bitcoin. And then when you when you when you get the WBTC, the wrapped Bitcoin, let's say on Ethereum, and you send them back the big wrapped Bitcoin, you get back the, the underlying Bitcoin. It sounds a bit complex and a bit um, you know lots of new terms, but if you check out WBTC, I can post a link also in the chat. Um, and the vaults are a way of decentralizing it. Anyone can be that custody provider. Uh, the next thing is, is the tooling. So we provide a bunch of really powerful and unique tools so that when people create coins and tokens, um, they, they are able to um, not just create it seamlessly, but you know, run it and grow it in, in an ongoing, uh, successful basis. So excited to talk about some of the features today and, and, and really looking forward for the people here to start creating um, you know, different coins and tokens and, and be an integral piece of the token economy. Um, so these are not three separate functions. It's all part of the unit network. You can see here, um, this is the, the create token or DAO page. It's super simple. You just give it a name, you give it an image or picture, you add a supply of how many tokens you're creating and that symbol, you know, and, and that's it. You know, so let's say you created a Michael token, you know, it's the name is Michael, my full name is Michael Healy. You put a picture, like a profile picture, you can see there's gonna be a thousand or a million supply, meaning how many would you like to have? And then a symbol, let's say, you know, like, Let's say it was Zachary, it could be Z-A-C-H. Let's say Olga makes a token, it could be O-L-G-A. Or Frederick here, it could be Fred, F-R-E-D, or F-D. You know, you get to choose the symbol. And here you can see on the right, you can see how you can, you can search for different tokens. You know, you get the explore view. So now we have about 800 tokens and DAOs on the unit network. You know, we're excited for 800 million DAOs and tokens, 800,000, you know. And then, you know, this decade, there'll be 8 billion. You know, every single person in the world will have a DAO and a token. And we're going to be much more cooperative and collaborative in, in working together and supporting one another. So you can see here, these are four, four more features. You've got the treasure on the left. So this basically lets you look at a token or a coin and go, okay, how much value does that coin or token have backing it up? You know, you can see it's got an amount of Bitcoin, it's got Ethereum, it's got DOT, it's got Polygon, it's got Solana, BNB. These are the digital assets backing up that specific coin. You can see um, how the vaults work. So you can easily add unit to create a vault. And um, when you create, let's say here, a BNB vault, the underlying BNB gets sent to the vault creator. So let's say I create a, um, a unit, a BNB vault, a Binance uh, smart chain vault, and I put in a thousand unit. You know, now when um, you know, a unit, let's say, gets to $1,000, that's a million dollars of value, I'm able to receive some underlying um, BNB because I'm helping store and protect it and uh, custody it for the network. So instead of it being stored by one place like Bitco, anyone is able to effectively borrow against their unit and receive the underlying, um, you know, Bitcoin, ETH, DOT, um, BTC. It, it sounds super complex, but once you use that, I promise you it's, it's going to be much simpler. And, and we're really looking forward to making it more seamless. Uh, number three, talk about the token creative book. And finally, we've got the DEX. So the DEX is the decentralized exchange. And that is where, you know, if someone creates, let's say, a token, they're able to, to use the decentralized exchange to trade, to buy, to sell these tokens and, um, and, and, and get liquidity for it. Liquidity is when you're able to buy, sell, and trade it. So um, big question, how is this relevant? Why should I care? 
you know, you, it's so important, you know, the token economy, because it's going to revolutionize, revolutionize every sector, you know, whether it's impact, it's, um, you know, real estate, startups, you know, governance, community, social um, investments, um, artists and creators, you know, regardless of what industry you're in, this is going to have a, a paramount impact. Why? Because you're going to be able to align the incentives much better. You know, if you're, let's say, a charity, now people are donating to your charity and, you know, they, they give you some funds, you know, they're not getting any return. They're not getting much um, decision-making for the government, the, the, how decisions get made. Um, they also uh, can't see where the money flows. You know, once you donate to a charity, you never see that money again. You're just hoping that they, they do something good of it. You know, if it's an artist and creator, um, really cool that you know if you meet someone who's, a, who's an aspiring rapper or artist or creator you can see that when they become really big all of the people who hold that token can, can get some of the upside um so a little bit of, of you know at the moment you know we've got more than 2600 token holders we've got about 35,000 users and members of the unit network about 800 tokens being created um 22 stable coins these are things like gbpu um jpyu uh, city tokens you know city and industry tokens super key we thought will be the biggest uh, tokens this decade. It's going to be ones with lots of people and lots of economic activity. So places like you know London, New York, Tokyo, um, Dubai, um, you know um, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Rio, you know Mexico City. These are like city tokens, which you know we believe are going to catalyze the token economy. And the next one, industry. So things like art, music, fashion, film, you know. Th things which have a lot of people in these industries with businesses and um, and, and are able to kickstart and drive the token economy. Um, we have our unit flywheel. So these are the different initiatives within our marketing, um, you know, um, put aside our marketing focus. So we've got conferences. So our next um, up and coming event is the World Polkadot Forum. I'm going to share a link in the in the chat and you know we, we believe that polkadot is a digital asset ecosystem that's so so exciting kind of like you know when when, when i go introduce to bitcoin it was about nine cents you know and people are like yeah what is bitcoin you know is it a scam you know like is like you know is it ever going to go to a dollar two dollars five dollars you know um can it be used for anything is it just for illegal stuff and you know polkadot at the moment you know is is in my opinion at a similar stage where people are like okay what is this this project, you know, fair enough, it was created by the person who made Ethereum, but, you know, what is the point of it? What can I use it for? We, so we're excited because, you know, we feel a, a big responsibility to teach people about it, uh, Polkadot and, and explain why it's useful and, and relevant. Um, we've got some amazing speakers. Um, it's coming up in the in the next few days, so I'll share a link in, my, in the chat. Uh, the Unit Masters, we're proud to be on our 11 cohort. Really grateful for all our um, you know, our. You know, study leads of the unit masters program and, and the people our speakers all of the um the graduates you know who are really working hard on a mission to to create a world where everyone is able to understand to the token economy they can understand web3 they can understand you know why sh why is this industry something that i should care about or, or learn more about so you know if everyone here can feel that the unit masters is is what they created and you know we're on a mission to educate the world you know we we, we don't want to charge for it we just want to really help people and and gives an opportunity similar to when the internet came out and people are like why why would i why should i have an email you know why do i care about this internet thing you know where it is at such an early stage at the moment you know same with, with when the iphone came out or the smartphone you know we it's our responsibility to educate and to inform people uh, and give them a perspective about the token economy um the, the next thing is our unit ventures program so anyone with an idea or a um a a vision you know a a, a plan to, to create something you know, we are launching um, this unit masters program and it's 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 similar to this um, incubator accelerator called Y Combinator. And what it does is people with an idea of a DAO or a token can join the program and we'll support it, you know, we'll support you, we'll, we'll, we'll give you um, help in, in building your network, we'll help you raise the, the funding for it, we can help, help and support once you raise the funding, how to best allocate it, how to build a sustainable model, how to engage the community. So, um, we can also post links to our unit ventures program. Um, this is something that we've worked extremely hard on because we feel there's such an important need to to um, support people in creating DAOs. If they're left on their own, it will still happen. But if we give a little bit of support, you know, we can really speed it up. So these are the different ecosystems and, and networks which we support on the unit network. 
You know, so if, if someone really cared about Polkadot or Algorand or Avalanche or Solana or Cosmos, you know, we support it. You know, what that means is when you create a coin, you're able to put, you know, Solana, Cosmos, Stella, you know, Avalanche, Polygon, BNB dot into your treasury, into your bank. And you become effectively a, a DAO, which can, which is connected and able to use all of these different networks. Um, here is the, um, the different layers of tokens that, that the ecosystem. So we see number one on the blue chips. These are likes of, you know, the ones I showed you on the previous page, Bitcoin, you know, BNB, Solana, Polkadot, Matic. These, these are the one, the big ones, you know, there's maybe about 15 of them, 20 of them. The, the, the blue chips are going to grow, you know, Bitcoin will go to a million, 10 million, um, you know, DOT's going to go to, you know, 200, then 2000, Ethereum is going to grow. So these, these are the big ones, you know, they, they don't need to be backed up by anything. They don't need their treasury. They just, you know, you know, like effectively internet nations that will continue to start everything else, including unit, you know, wants to be a big one. So how do we get, how do we become a big one? We need to be backed up. So we need, you know, we need blue chips inside our treasury. We need, you know, a growing, growing, um, you know, platform and and lots of community. We need, you know, a thriving masters program, which is what we, you know, we need help with everyone here in, in spreading the message and, you know, building this Web three and, and digital asset movement, uh, which you know will change the world more than the internet, more than the mobile phone. Um, and and you know, we we also have stable coins. So you know, if you look at um, what are people using at the moment, you know, they're using uh, GBP USD. EUR, you know, these are, you know, these are all tokens effectively. Unit has a wrapped version of, of these tokens. So like EURU, GBPU, and, and all of these are backed up by the blue chip. So you can see clearly, you know, in a decentralized way, let's say that there is, you know, 10 million GBPU, you know, how much Bitcoin, Ethereum, DART, you know, BNB is backing up that, the stability for that coin. And what we expect is it to be significantly over collateralized, meaning, you know, there might be 20 million uh, euros, but there's, you know, 50 million euros of Bitcoin backing up that 20 million euros. Uh, next, the city and industry token, talked about those briefly before, you know, really excited to see how we can team up with everyone here and people in our community to build up these industry and city coins, because what this does is it gets the entire industry and the entire city rallying behind, the, you know, th this, um, this token economy locally. So, you know, they might not care about Bitcoin, they might not care about Ethereum, but you know, they'll care a lot about London or they might care about New York or they might care about Tokyo or let's say someone's from, um, you know, um, Berlin. You know, they're like, you know, I don't care about any of this crypto stuff, but if it's about Berlin and helping the Berlin people and the Berlin businesses, that's what I, I care about. So that's what the city coins, same with the industry coins will create. Uh, next are the agency and fund tokens. So, you know, what is the way, you know, we can help bring about the token economy, get lots of tokens being created. It's by having agencies, people that, and groups of people that help set up tokens, that help, you know, mentor and guide. I would recommend everyone here to look into setting up an agency, meaning if a local business or a local person wants to create a token, you as an agency, you know, you can support them. You know, and then the next stage after, after creating an agency is creating a, a DAO fund. So people can give you the money, they can give you the resources to, to support different DAOs and tokens. And then you become an expert because, you know, so few people at the moment, they, they really uh, understand and appreciate DAOs and tokens. If you just put a little bit of effort in and try and study what's available, you create some, they fail, you create more, they fail. And then you create some when they succeed, you, you become really a huge player and name in the token economy and DAO ecosystem. So, you know, highly recommend everyone here to get started creating tokens. Don't have too high expectations, you know, just give it a shot, you know, and, and then, you know, once, once to succeed, you'll be able to um, build agency and, and fund tokens beyond that. Um, next, um, we're building up a huge extensive network um, in lots of different cities globally. Th these link super well with our city tokens. And what we're doing here is trying to create a, a huge sense of community so that people in all of these different cities you know, we're trying to see how we can empower them, organize local events. So if, if you're in a city and you're organizing a meetup, please reach out. You know, we can help you um, in, in supporting, whether it's financially or whether it's, you know, supporting our network, you know, whether it's a meetup in a restaurant, you know, whether it's a cafe, whether it's just a group of friends, you know, at a venue like university, like, please, please work really hard on, on getting this message out because, you know, it's going to help and support lots of people. And it can really move our industry forward from the, you know, the speculative Ponzi-like reputation and fundamentals that has now to one where it's really backed by underlying value and you know can can really do lots of good for the world. So finally, um, please um, check out the different social media 
uh, channels. This is where we try and keep the uh, community and ecosystem up to date. Um, we're re working really hard on um, showcasing and covering and, and um, showing breaking news to, to what's happening. Um, we, we heavily depend on people uh, in our master's program and community to support us in growing the ecosystem. Um, you know, we, we're, we're trying to see how we can, um, we can um, speed up this token economy and it's really up to everyone here. Um, if anyone has any questions or feedback or thoughts, um, please, please feel free to um, write in the chat. I'm going to talk a little bit now about um, something else super important within the unit token economy. But before that, I can, um, I can answer some questions. Got a great question from Anne. How can one join Unit University? So Unit University is, is a research wing. So this is where we are working really hard on compiling reports and um, documents, research papers. You know, someone wants to learn about, let's say, the London token economy, or let's say, you know, the Lagos token economy, or say the, um, you know, the uh, Mumbai token economy. This is where our university is working hard on understanding who are the movers and shakers, who are the big decision makers, uh, they, they want to know about fashion, you know, in the token economy. Our university is, is, is covering that. And then uh, news, which I did mention earlier, that the news wing is, is responsible for making sure that we are covering and featuring people who, um, who just need a little bit of outreach. So we're trying to work hard on making sure that people who are doing amazing stuff within the token economy get uh, the, the recognition and, um, and, and um, coverage that they deserve. Um, yep. Um, Zach mentioned it while here. Zach is one of my co-founders and partners. Uh, question from Jumpy. Flow is not in the plan. So Flow is a, is a blockchain. It started from uh, some people I met in 2017 um, who were behind CryptoKitties. And, you know, they were initially built on Ethereum. And, and what they realized is that Ethereum just couldn't handle the scale they were going for. Uh, so they, they launched their own blockchain. And, um, and they're based in uh, Vancouver, I believe, or Canada. And... Um, and we're looking forward to seeing how we can support flow. We have a quite a rigorous process to, to see which bridges we support or vaults. And, you know, we look forward to supporting maybe 20, 25 different reserve assets. Um, we were super careful because, you know, certain um, projects, for instance, one Terra, you know, or Luna, which might seem like a, 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 a reserve asset or thriving ecosystem, you know, it didn't have the fundamentals and you know, it was back too much on speculative value. So we're really careful in terms of which ones we're supporting and we're making sure that you know, there is a bunch of process before we, we support a digital asset. Um, cool. So uh, now I'd love to maybe talk a little bit about um, what makes, like what makes, um, what, what through the process of creating a token on the unit network. Um, it's, it's super, super simple. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll walk everyone to, through it. So uh, here you can see, this is what you know being invited to the unit network looks like. Um, I'm going to create an account, Michael Healy, and uh, give an email. I'll put Michael to and password. Cool. So this is how you create an account to the unit network. You hit register, and you basically end up with an account like this. You know, it's super simple. You've got a wallet here, you can transfer, you can deposit, you can stake, you can uh, add to the vault, you can withdraw tokens from the network. Uh, here you can see the different coins that you hold. You know, you, if you have a portfolio, you can see how much they're worth, how many you hold. So we're, we're gonna go to the explore page and see some of the different coins uh, on the unit network. You can see we've got a bunch of industry and city coins here. We're gonna create a coin. So I'm gonna create a coin for the 7th of July, of July. Uh, master's session. Cool. I'm going to give it an image. Um, maybe the image I can give is all the people here. So I'll take a screenshot and I'll call it session. Cool. Um, so supply, maybe I'll give it, let's say, a, a thousand, maybe. And I'll, you know, I can give 10 or 100 to each one. And then we'll call it master's, master's seven, so master's seven. As an example, so once you create a coin, what this does is effectively, you know, creating it on the unit network, and you see that's how easy it is to create a coin. You know, now I've uh, Michael two eighty eight. That's that's my username. I've I've created a coin. The unit network. There's a thousand that exist. Uh, I haven't assigned anyone the team yet. I haven't posted any updates. Uh, there are no leaderboard or token holders. You know, um, 
the first thing I can do is I can go to, let's say, the sale page and I can set up various sale rounds. So I can say, how much am I going to sell my tokens for? You know, a dollar, two dollars, ten dollars. Uh, what is the quantity? You know, that I'm, I'm going to sell at that price. Um, you know, who can buy it? You know, is it just the core team? Is it the advisors? It's important to set up the staging because, um, you, you know, you really want to give an opportunity to allow the core team or the advisors to buy in first because they're going to be working operationally on it. Uh, then community members later. Um, you can also set up bonuses so that, you know, if a core team member or an advisor helps you to raise raise um, raise funding, you know, help you sell the tip sale rounds, they, they get bonuses for it. So this is a way of rewarding people so we can set up a sale round. Um, also, important is the bank. So you can see now there is no money inside the bank. You know, there's zero Bitcoin, there's zero Ethereum. Our bank has zero, you know, meaning if someone looked at this token, they can see, okay, you know, this organization has no funds, this DAO has no funds to pay its, um, its team, you know, to pay for its growth. You know, this is a way, you know, you can see in the bank, how much does it have to survive to operate? So um, I'm going to transfer um, some Master 7 token um, to a user. Maybe I'm going to send, you know, uh, 10 of them to Michael. That's my, my account, my transfer. And you see now, ten now, now if I go into the micro wallet, you know, my, my token account, you can I'll be able to see I've got seven masters, se masters seventh token. You know, if you go back into the bank, now there should be only uh, nine nine hundred ninety left. So the bank only holds nine hundred ninety. If more of them get sold, then you know this this gets reduced. Um, if anyone wants some master seven token, please feel free to post in the chat your username, and I'll. Um, I'll send you, uh, I'll send it to so Zachary. I can send more after the, the session too. So I'll go to user, um, 7th of July. I'll send, uh, I'll send 15, I'll send a bit more to Zachary. So if it's Zachary and a transfer, you can see another 15 got sent. So now the master seven token has only 975 left. You know? And if, if, if we sold some of this master seven token, as collectively everyone on the call, the amount of Bitcoin and the amount of Ethereum might increase here. And this is what the, the project that DAO has to operationally run. Now, if you know, we sell some of these Master 7 token and they become worth lots and lots, um, then you can move some of the value to the treasury. And you see now there is no funds in the treasury. It's, it's treasury is zero, means the flow price is also zero, right? That means that if, um, if, the, if people are buying the token, they need to know that it could go to zero, meaning that it could you know, go up a lot in, in price on the exchange here, but it could drop down to zero. There is no fundamentals. But if you know, we, we work on building something and we build up the treasury, that builds up the fundamentals, the floor price. And if the floor price goes up, it's going to push the exchange price to go up. So there's also an exchange when you create a token. Every token has an exchange. Uh, how it works is you basically stake um, USDU and you stake some of the, let's say, Master 7 token. So if you put, I, I have no USDU on this account and no masters you on this specific account. Um, okay, let, let me send some, um, so my, my username here is Michael288. Uh, so I'm gonna transfer uh, to a user, maybe 10 to Michael288. Now if I hit exchange and hit stake, you can see I've got 10 master seven token on this personal account. Um, I can also send, let's say 10 USDU, um, from another account, and USDU to masters. So I just sent it from another account. So now there's 10 USDU and 10 masters token. So I could stake five of them and five master seven. It's stake and um, do you want to stake it? Pull those empty USD five shares. So I hit confirm. That basically means that now there's five USDU and five masters seven token in the pool. So if someone, let's say, um, buy some more. So I'm going to buy um, one, one USDU worth of Master 7. I'm going to receive um, 0 0.81 Master 7. If I confirm and I hit back, um, now there is about 5.98 USDU in the pool. There's about 4.18 Master 7 in the pool. So this is what's called an exchange pool. When people are buying, selling, and trading against the pool, you know, let's say now I want to sell some, I want to sell let's say two master seven into the pool, I confirm it changes again. You see now I sold two more, now there's six 
Master 7 pool at $4. And based on how many USDU and how many Master 7 tokens are in the pool, you can see what the price is at the moment. So before you saw the Master 7 token was um, worth a dollar, now it's worth $0.65. So it effectively it changes over time based on the ratio of USDU and Master 7. So this is how, this is what's called an AMM, an automated market maker. You know, the likes of Uniswap, PancakeSwap, SushiSwap, uh, Bancor, these are automated market makers. And the cool thing about Unit is, is we make it super easy when someone's creating a coin, they already have an exchange built in. They don't need to worry about how do I get on Binance? How do I get on Coinbase? How do I get on these exchanges? Because it's, it's built in uh, from the get-go. It's kind of like, you know, if you built a website now on many platforms, they give you, let's say, a free email address. So this is more or less the same thing. You know, it's free to create a token. You know, you get a free exchange set up. You've got features like the bank. You've got features like the treasury. You can set up sale rounds. Um, also, we're releasing a bunch of community features. So here you can see there's an event feature. You can create an event for your token uh, or a conference. Um, we're excited to re uh, release other features, you know, things like polls, things like a store, things like, um, you know, contests so that you can make governance and decision making with a token. Um, here you can see if you went on to info and you go, went down to the leaderboard, you can see, wow, Zachary holds 16.21 Master 7 token. Um, you know, Michael holds 10. Um, Michael 288 owns 3.82. Um, you can also see on the exchange what the exchange history is. So you can see Zachary actually bought more uh, Masters token. You know, after two minutes ago, we bought some and we saw some. Uh, Zachary here is on the call. Um, he, he, he bought some. He, he went onto a buy page and he bought some. And that's why, you know, you can go on the leaderboard. You can see he, he holds more than the 15 uh, Master 7 token that was originally sent. Um, yeah, so this, this is a short introduction to your network. If you went on to your profile, this way you can uh, see some information about um, your, your token. You can also invite people to the network and you get um, half a percent of the exchange fees. So if let's say you invited, you know, a thousand people and they did a thousand dollars of buying and selling and trading, that's a million dollars of value, you get, you know, $5,000 in exchange fees. Um, so really looking forward because that basically allows everyone to set up their own exchange and allows um, you know, people to, to, um, to, to grow the token economy, but they get rewarded and remunerated for that you know, growth and, and upside. Um, question here from uh, Kushagra. Could you talk about some mainstream uses, use cases where the unit token is already in use? For sure. So um, one question, well, one, one use of the token economy, there was a road in Indonesia which needed some money and um, you know, this is an example of where a token can be created to finance the road. And then when the, when the road gets built, you know, the people who finance the road, they can get, you know, they can sell their tokens to the people who benefit from that road. You know, that, that's like one clear use case of, you know, financing public infrastructure. Let's say there's a library which needs to get built. You know, people, a bunch of friends can create a token, you know, sell some of the tokens to finance the library. Once the library, you know, benefits hundreds and thousands of people, you know, those people can, you know, buy those tokens back from the people who originally funded the library. And then, you know, they can go out and create more libraries. You know, they can create, create more playgrounds. They can create more roads, you know, highways. You know, you don't just have to depend on the government to, 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 to build the infrastructure. It can be anyone. You know, and that's this exciting part of the token economy. Anyone with an idea or a vision can get started. Another example is, is a musician. You know, let's say someone is an artist and they they have no money. They're sleeping on your couch. You know, and and um, they're kind of struggling, you know, because they're really good at music, but they struggle, you know, to market themselves, to promote, you know, to when, when they get playing gigs at places they don't know how to ask them for, for to be paid for it, so they can do it all for free. Um, this is where you know someone can create a token as an artist, and they can you know sell some of the tokens to people who they're friends with or people who see an an opportunity in supporting them, and you know everyone will be motivated to help market the musician. You know, everyone will be motivated to help them, you know, play at gigs and help them get booked, you know, and then someone has a spare guitar, someone's got a couch, you know, someone's got a spare room. They go, hey, look, you know, take, take, you can sleep here, you can use, I'll give you some clothes, I'll give you some, you know, equipment. Um, why am I motivated? Because, you know, I'm your friend, but also because I have some of your tokens. So you effectively have people working, collaborating and supporting one another. And when, you know, that musician becomes, you know, the next, you know, Jay-Z or the next, you know, um, really famous name, you know, they, 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 it's not only them who benefit and they become multi-millionaires and billionaires, but, you know, all the people that were integral to their success, you know, their friends, their family, you know, their, 
their their first fans that people went to the gig when not many people were there. You know, it's just so new. So that, that does a few examples. The unit token is, is working on supporting all of this. Um, it receives a small exchange fee when people buy and sell and trade, it gets a half a percent. It also uh, helps power the vaults. So when people create a vault, they use the unit token for it. Um, there's also a, a bond staking feature. So that allows people to lock up some unit to secure the network and they get rewarded uh, for the security as well as um, for um, stabilizing the price of the token. unit. Um, question here from Sadin. Um, um, when the supply of a coin in millions or billions, does that mean that the price will not go above a certain li limit? Uh, for example, ADA or XRP, I heard a friend saying that the maximum price this coin can reach is $10 roughly. So this is a really good question. So Sadin is wondering, you know, if, if there's a supply really big, you know, does it mean it limits the, the price of it? So what, what, I, what I'm going to share now is two websites that, I, um, that, that are really, really good. One of them is called CoinGecko. So I'll share my screen. One is called Coin Market Cap. So here you can see this is Coin Market Cap, and here you can see this is Coin Gecko. So you know a lot of people look at a coin like Bitcoin or Ethereum and Tether and BNB and XRP, and they go, "Wow, this is twenty thousand dollars. I don't have twenty thousand dollars. I don't want to buy any Bitcoin. I I, I see, well, Solana is only thirty eight dollars. You know, BNB is two hundred forty dollars, or well, Cardano or XRP is thirty three cents. I can get a lot more." You know, XRP or Cardano, if I had $1,000, right? I can't even get 5% of a, a Bitcoin, right? But you see, the price is really not the important thing. The important thing is what the market cap is. So the market cap basically tells you, you know, how much is this, um, this project worth? If you multiplied, you know, the amount of each coin. So let's say Bitcoin, there are $20,800 20, um, $20, for one Bitcoin. And there's 19 million Bitcoins, you get about, you get exactly 398 um, million as a market capitalization. You know, if you went a um, dollar for USDC and there's 55 billion USDCs, you get a market cap of 55 billion. You know, BNB, there's $240 a BNB and there's 163 million BNB. That means the market cap is 39 million, a billion, sorry. So you can see how are these ranked? Why is this number one, number two, number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve? It's because of you see the market cap. So Bitcoin has a market cap of three hundred ninety-eight billion. Uh, Ethereum has one hundred forty-seven billion. You know, BNB is thirty-nine billion. Uh, Cardano is fifteen uh, billion, seven billion. So you know, to answer uh, the question that um, that uh, Sadin mentioned. Um, so if you look at something like ADA or XRP. You know, now it's about 33 cents. So for it to go to $10, you know, $10 is about um, 30 times what it is here. So now it's, it's valued about 16 billion. So if it went up 30 times, you know, 16 billion times 30 is about 480 billion. So that's basically saying I want XRP to be bigger than Bitcoin, you know, 480 billion. Or if you look at something like Cardano, you know, if, if this is to go to $10, that's about 20 times. So 20 times. 15 billion is about 300 billion. So you're expected to go twice of Ethereum. So the market cap is really like, how valuable is this thing? It can be a bit misleading because, you know, you might go, hmm, you know, Solana is $38, this is 46 cents. What if this went to $38, you know? Or what if this went to $20,000? But, you know, for this to go up to $20,000, you know, it needs to go 50 cents to 20,000. That's about 40,000 times bigger. So it's 40,000 times um, 40,000, 40,000 times uh, 15 billion, you know, that is, um, that is quadrillion. So it's, it's basically, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really big. It's like um, 60 quadrillion. So, I mean, it's highly unlikely that Cardano will be worth 60 quadrillion um, just because, you know, um, you know, that's bigger, much bigger than the entire world economy. So, um, uh, you know, highly recommend not just looking at the price of it, but the market cap. Um, also um, useful when you buy a coin, you know, I, I like to look at, um, you know, if, let's say BNB, you know, look, look at how far, um, how, this is on CoinGecko, how, how far down is it from the all-time high? You know, how high is it? How, how much higher is it from the all-time low? That gives you an indication of, you know, has it grown significantly from what it is? And, you know, is it going to continue to grow? Is it 
on a downward decline. Um, the, the big problem with coins at the moment is they don't have really any fundamental value uh, from a, a financial sense, in the sense that you know, when you look at a traditional company, you're curious, is it profitable? Is it losing money? Is, does it you know, have any you know, money in its like, bank account? Does it have a book value? And you know, currently most of these coins, you know, this is um, 398 billion dollars of speculative value. 16 billion of speculative value, 17 billion of speculative value. In the future, you know, this decade when the token economy starts to succeed, you're going to look at a project like say FTX, and you're going to see, okay, this is worth $3.6 billion. How much of that is underlying value? How much of it is fundamental value, right? Um, and, and that is really where the treasury comes in. So a question from Anne. Thank you, Michael. Um, thank you, Anne. Um, must, must one have coding or programming knowledge and experience to be able to create a token? Thank you. So, you know, if you were to create a token or a coin, you know, using software and uh, using code and, you know, on Ethereum, something like Solidity, it can be very complex. You can get it wrong, you know, make a mistake. You lose a lot of money or you get hacked. The cool thing about unit is we take care a lot. We take care about all of that nitty gritty stuff. So, you know, you saw I, we created a token there. It was one page. You give it a name. An image, a supply, a symbol. You've, you've effectively created a token. If you if you were to build, you know, a coin on many blockchain protocols, it can be quite complex. It can be really expensive. Like setting up a website was twenty years ago. Creating a coin now can cost you know thousands or tens of thousands of dollars, or hundreds of thousands, um, and it's also risky. You know, you might be saying, okay, you know, what happens if you know we make a bug in the code that's mess up? You know, the good thing about units, we take care of all of this, and you know, we're we're run on our own layer one blockchain. So you know, we make it really uh, seamless. The reason why we have our own layer one blockchain is because you know a few things. One is we can, um, we don't we, you know unit can collect its own fees. You know, it collects unit fees when when people you know use the network. A very very small one. You don't have to pay you know Ethereum or BNP or you know solve fees. So that's the benefit of being a layer one chain. And you know creating your own blockchain is very complicated. You know in the sense that it's a lot of work. It's a it's a big uh, security consideration. And you know the reason why we're built on something like Polkadot is because it it makes it really easy. You know, um, it's still quite challenging, but it's much easier to build a blockchain on Polkadot. It gives you a bunch of building kits uh, using something called Substrate, and um, that allows you to build your own uh, blockchain. You know, using a bunch of tools and, and features that they provide. So um, to answer your question, and it's, it's super easy uh, to create a coin or token on Unit. You don't need any co um, coding or programming expertise. Um, Question here from Kushagra: Is it possible to create stable coins on the network? Absolutely. So you know you can create your own version of stable coins. We we provide a number of stable coins um, simply because you know we are you know helping to uh, service many of these markets like uh, GBPU, USDU, EURU, JPYU. We have about 20, 25 stable coins, which represents some of the biggest economies. If you want to create your own stable coin, you're welcome to do so. I do recommend. Um, creating a coin um, which isn't stable just because um, the issue with stable coins is, you know, when upside gets generated, it doesn't, um, it doesn't reward all the people that bought the, the token. You know, the issue with stable coins is, you know, fair enough, it's meant to be stable, but, you know, really interesting, I believe the upside with the token economy is when, you know, something thrives and benefits, it, 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 um, it, it offers value to all the network. So question here from um, Tatenda, Hi, Michael. So is the price of the token determined by the owners of the coin, not by the market? Good question. So it gets determined by the exchange. So when people are buying and selling, the market sort of dictates the price. Uh, initially, if you create a coin, you can set what the starting price is. So if you can think of like a simple example, let's say iPhones. You know, the iPhone costs, let's say hypothetically, $1,000. And Apple gets to choose what they sell it for on the Apple, Apple shop, the Apple store, and it's $1,000. It's a lot of money for an iPhone, right? They sell the iPhone. Now, if you have the box, the iPhone, you can sell on eBay, you can sell it you know, at the market, you can sell it for you know, $500 or $700. You can sell it for whatever you want, and, and that is what the exchange price is. That's what the market is buying and selling and trading it. Um, and when, when lots of people buy it, you know, the exchange price might go up, but it won't go up above $1,000 because someone will go, why am I buying you know, an iPhone from you for $1,200 when I can go to the Apple store and get it for $1,000. So that is, is kind of like how the sale rounds operate and the exchange. So can, the exchange is determining what the, the trading value is and the, the sale is, is determining what the, um, the, the sale price is. Um, and the treasury is basically the iPhone will not go lower than a certain price, meaning that, you know, there's a shop next to the Apple store, which will 
you know, you can give your iPhone to and they're going to give you $200. So even if nobody is willing to buy the iPhone, you know, you have an iPhone, you want to, your token, you want to sell it for $250, $220, you know, it's not going to drop below $150 because someone will buy it for you for $150 and sell it to the store next to the Apple store, the treasury, which, which has an amount of, you know, value to buy it back from you. Um, question here uh, from um, Marco, good question. Say I have a startup that needs to raise $1 million and give away 5% of equity or value, which leads to a $20 million um, dollar valuation. On the token economy, would I create 10 million, 20 million tokens and sell 1 million tokens for $1 each? Exactly. So th that, this is a great uh, point by Marco. You know, if you have a startup or a company that wants a million dollars and wants to give up 5% of the project, you know, typically you, you register a company and you sell 5% of the company for $5 million. So very similarly with the token economy, with unit, you create 20 million tokens or coins um, and you sell, you know, 5% of it, you'll sell 1 million tokens for a dollar. 1 million tokens for a dollar raises a million dollars and, and those people can buy, sell, trade it, they can exchange it. So re really great point, Marco. Uh, Marco is based in Brazil. So if anyone else is based in Brazil, please feel free to urge him. He's, he's a strong um, advisor, proponent and, and pioneer of the token economy and, and really excited to, um, what we can do together there. Um, Zachary, how important is the community for the success? So I would say the community is one of the most important and critical pieces because you know the community is, is the is is the people are the people that are going to help improve the marketing of the project of the you know the sales of the project the uh, product you know these are the people that you know will stick with you when it's going well when it's going tough they 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 care about the mission the vision you know they 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 see more than just the monetary upside you know so it's very important to nurture the community because it's very important that the underlying fundamentals are there but you really need to take care of the community and and um, you know example of a good community. Um, are ones where people get along with one another, you know, they're learning from one another, they've got, you know, amazing experiences. We're working so hard on trying to build our unit ecosystem community. We're quite early in, in the sense that we only have 30,000 people in the community, but, you know, we, we, we anticipate a future with 30 million and, you know, 300, you know, 3 billion people on the unit ecosystem globally. And everyone's just motivated and helping and supporting one another. So, you know, you meet someone who's part of the unit ecosystem community, they're like, cool, you know, you need some help please here, this is what we can offer. And, you know, what we anticipate is that the same way the internet made access to information super easy and seamless things like Google, things like Wikipedia, you know, you want to listen to the internet, it was super easy. Uh, the, the mobile phone did the same for communication. So, you know, if you wanted to speak to someone who's on another part of the world, you know, not, before it used to be really expensive. You know, you have a $5 call, five minute call, it's $5 or $15. The smartphone just made communication seamless, right? You know, now we're at a stage where money and value and investments and, you know, finances are super complicated. You know, you don't want to talk about it. It's stressful. You know, the token economy is going to create a world where, you know, money just flows around so much more freely. You know, people don't think or stress or, or care about money as much as they do now. Um, and, and, and the token economy is going to create that. You know, it's just going to allow for people to support and, and have a vested interest and stake in one another. And we're working really hard on this, you know, zero sum competitive mentality where everyone's trying to, you know, protect their finances, their money to one where, you know, everyone just, you know, doesn't think about it as much. They, they, it just, it's just an afterthought. It's like, you know, even if the rich get richer, it's fine because everyone else gets a good stake, you know, so really important. That's one of our key missions. Uh, Myra is one of our co-founders. She just posted um, the World Polkadot Forum. So our conference team has been working really hard on that. Um, it's it's coming up in, in two days. It's going to be from 10 a.m. Um, to uh, 7, uh, 7 p.m. So, um, uh, 1,100 to 1,900 uh, UTC. Uh, you can register on the link here and, and really appreciate, um, you know, people to participate, support our speakers. You'll be able to learn lots about the Polkadot ecosystem. Uh, we believe that the Polkadot will be bigger than Ethereum, bigger than Bitcoin. Uh, I had a good conversation with, with the founder of Polkadot a few months ago in Switzerland. Uh, he, he was a CTO of Ethereum. And I asked him, you know, how long is it going to take before uh, Polkadot overtakes Ethereum? And he says, you know, the end of the next bear market. So if you think we're in a bear market now, you know, maybe we've got a few more months before uh, Polkadot really takes off and thrives and really, really good to, to learn more about it at this stage. Um, and much appreciation. Once I create a token, am I able to list it on an exchange? How easy, difficult is the listing process? So uh, if you create a token on a unit, you know, you automatically get an exchange listing. You know, it's, it's, it's like pancake swap or unit swap. You don't really have to worry or stress about it. Think about it. There's also you no know, wash trading because, um, you know, many big exchanges, there's a lot of fake trading volume. You know, unit uh, has, has tools in place to prevent, prevent that. And then, you know, if, if your token gets really big, then you can, all, you can get listed on the likes of those exchanges. Uh, you probably won't have to pay for it when you're really big. They'll just come to you and say, hey, you know, we want to make 
uh, some money of people trading your token on our exchange, can we list you for free? So um, that is the, what's going to happen. Um, our Unit Masters team says, feel free to tweet us. Uh, the Unit Masters, what you've learned. Uh, this is the Twitter handle, and LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook. You know, we're working really hard on you know covering many of these updates and, and bringing uh, changes and feedback. So if anyone has any feedback or advice or ways we can improve the program, please feel free to reach out. Um, Final point, um, Zach, Zachary wants to thank everyone today. Your questions and interests are essential to Unimasters. I really appreciate everyone's time. Uh, final question um, from um, Joseph Rotondi, one of our other co-founders. Michael, what do you think um, is the biggest challenge we face in building a token economy and what excites you most about the future? That's a great question. So what uh, is the biggest challenge we face? So I think this concept you know, of the cooperative token economy is so new and different. It's like, you know, let's say, um, you know, Zach started a company, Joe's his investor, and, you know, I'm his employee, Jeff is the customer. Why, why would um, Zachary and Joe want to give away a piece of their pie to me, the employee, and Jeff, the customer? You know, it's very hard for them to see, you know, why they would want to share it. But, you know, once they realize that if they give a piece of their, their ownership, their equity to the customers, the employee, the pie gets much bigger. You know, Zachary will do much better. Joe will do much better. You know, th this education piece, once they realize that and they properly experience it, because, you know, they might even learn about it. They might understand it, but applying it, you know, really embodying, understanding, you, they only really see it and, and feel it when, when it happens, you know. So the moment people create tokens and they see, wow, you know, it's so much easier to, to launch a project within the token economy than the traditional economy. I think that's when the big, big challenge will be overcome, this mental bar barrier and block. Um, another big challenge is maybe the regulatory risk and uncertainty. So a lot of regulators have very strict rules on preventing um, normal people, retail from buying into coins, tokens, making investments. And, and I think it, it's, um, they, 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 they serve a, a very important role because there are a lot of scammers and Ponzi schemes which take advantage of people and they lose their life savings, you know, and um, they're just trying to protect people. But what um, they need, I think, is a, a a sound framework like what we offer within the treasury where you know people know exactly the level of um, um, downside risk and, and um, where the upside potential is because when there's full transparency then it becomes much clearer because imagine you know a regulator now there's 12,000 coins and tokens in the world you know there's going to be a future where there's 12 million you know if they can't even regulate 12,000 coins how are they going to regulate 12 million coins so it's, it's really difficult to do that so um, the best way is to use technology to seamlessly do it um, another big challenge is, um, is um, I guess, dealing with um, expectations that, you know, things take time. You know, there's a quote, you know, people underestimate, uh, people overestimate how much can be done in a year and underestimate how much can be done in 10 years. So, you know, providing this, you know, vision and support and, and belief that, you know, it takes time and everyone's working together, that, that, that can be complicated. And what excites me most about the future, great question, uh, that joke, what excites me is, is creating a world where, you know, money and value is much less relevant. You know, people can do things like create music, create art, you know, travel, you know, and the money piece isn't as important as, as it is now. So it sounds a bit utopian, but, you know, I'm 100% confident that this will happen, you know, within the next decade. And it really excites me because then people have more opportunity to reach their full potential. And we can create a society that, you know, is able to largely thrive more and, you know, people support one another. They're not thinking, oh my gosh, you know, um, Claudio is, you know, successful, Marie is successful. That means that, you know, they, they reduce my chance of being successful. You know, people will be like, cool, I've got some Claudio, I've got some Marie, I've got some Richmond, I've got some Gloria, I've got some Manke, I've got some Deborah, you know, I'm happy for their success. So that's, that's the, the economy that we're creating. So really appreciate everyone's time, time today. We're a minute over. I, I thank you so much, everyone. And, and looking forward to working together and, and co-creating within the circular economy. Please feel free to reach out to our team members and, and, and um, yeah, excited to see what we can do together. Thank you, everyone.